So someone that's in pre-foreclosure, they have some type of financial hardship, so they've missed their payments right on their mortgage. And there's two types of pre-foreclosures or foreclosures. If you are in a judicial state, that is a lease pendants. It is a lawsuit that's filed. And from then on, you have to go through the court system, which is why in states like Florida and California, the foreclosure process is a lot longer. Now, when you're in a non-judicial state like Texas or Georgia or other states like that, it's a lot shorter because you don't have to actually actually go through the court. They file a notice of default. This is a big deal because if you're wanting to find these sellers, you first need to figure out, is my state judicial or non-judicial? There's a lot of different lead sources that you can go after if you want to get listings. Now there is one specific source that perhaps you're curious about, you've been wanting to prospect, but the approach and the process is a little bit different than your typical for sale by owner and expired. So on today's episode of Vulcan 7 Coaches and Mentors, we have an amazing guest that's gonna help us understand this specific lead source, and that is the pre-foreclosures. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring on our guest, Nicole Espinoza, the short sale queen. Welcome, Nicole. Hey, Loida. So for everyone that's watching that maybe is not familiar with you, just go ahead and give us a little bit about your background. Yeah, absolutely. So I am the short sale queen. Um, that's my company. I've been doing this for 14 years. And before we became a hundred percent referral, I, you know, I was right there with you and I, I still do cold call, you know, for the group and things like that. Um, and I focus on helping distressed sellers. So you know, the best part about pre foreclosures is that there are so many different exit strategies, but it's a niche that most people don't understand because they don't know how to talk to these sellers. And so I found that out really early on when I was working with distressed sellers and realizing how many agents were like, don't even waste your time. Like these things don't close, they're delusional. And I'm like, okay, well, this person really needs help. So how do we, how do I provide a solution for that? And then honestly, it just built a whole brand around it. And now I teach other realtors how to find these deals now. That's so awesome. So for anyone that's watching that maybe is not familiar with what is a pre-foreclosure, can you just quickly explain what that is? Absolutely. So someone that's in pre-foreclosure, they have some type of financial hardship, so they've missed their payments right on their mortgage. And there's two types of pre-foreclosures or foreclosures. If you are in a judicial state, um, that is a lease pendants that's filed, which is essentially a, a lawsuit. Not essentially, it is a lawsuit. Um, I got corrected on YouTube, so I don't, I want, I don't want to say essentially anymore. But it is a lawsuit that's filed, and from then on, you have to go through the court system, which is why in states like Florida and California, the foreclosure process is a lot longer. Now, when you're in a non-judicial state like Texas or Georgia or other states like that, it's a lot shorter because you don't have to actually go through the court they file a notice of default. And so this is this is a big deal because if you're wanting to find these sellers, you first need to figure out is my state judicial or non-judicial so that you can so you know what you're looking for, whether you're looking for the notice of defaults or the lease pendants. Oh, okay, got it. I'm glad that you explained that because you know, sometimes agents we get leads, it says pre-foreclosure or notice of default, and depending on where you're where it is that you're at, it can take a long process or it might be a completely different process. So, you know, with that being said, obviously when it comes to prospecting, this type of lead source is completely different than calling an expired or for sale by owner. Oh yeah. So usually what is the approach when reaching out to these homeowners? Well, I love that you said that because first and foremost, understanding the type of seller this is, is so important because a lot of realtors are so used to like what you're doing expires or even for sale by owners, you have to sit here and prove yourself, right? Like you have to sit here and show them like why you're the best agent. And it's actually the opposite mindset when you're working with pre-foreclosures because 80% of them are in denial that they even have to sell. They think, because remember these people, this isn't a list of people that have tried to sell. This is a list of people that have tried making their payments and they fell behind because of something that's happened. And now the, you know, it's generally a domino effect and now they're in debt and now they're facing foreclosure. So selling is the last thing that they want to do. So if you approach it as, you know, hi, I'm Nicole with, you know, real brokerage and I want to help you with selling your house, they're going to literally tell you, even if you just say you're a realtor, they're going to hang up on you. 
because they're going to tell immediately when you think about realtor, you think about commission, you think about, you know, selling. And this is literally a seller that you have to approach it as I'm a human being, you're a human being. I see you're in trouble. How can I help? And, you know, a lot of times that conversation is helping them get clarity and just realize like the current reality of their situation because they're in denial. They think that they can figure it out. You know, they're always saying like, oh, I've, I'm, I'm good. You know, I, I'm working with the bank right now. And that couldn't be, and they believe that, but this is why so many people lose their houses because so, no one was able to connect with them to help, right? Because they have their guard up. Why are you calling me? Why are you talking to me? Everyone's calling me. And so the approach has to be just as simple as, you know, hey, Loida, hey, listen, I'm calling about 123 Main. I just want to make sure you got taken care of because that's what you're doing. You have to get context to know how to help to provide a solution. Okay. So, you know, I'm glad that you brought that up and I do want to do a very quick role play just so that for whoever's watching, they can kind of get an idea. Um, so I I'll just say exactly what you said, you know, um, I already have it taken care of. So yeah. then how does the conversation go from there? So if someone says that to me, which is very common, I'll say, great. Oh, Loida, that's awesome. But what did you end up doing? Uh, you know, I'm already in communication with my bank. Uh, we got it covered. Awesome. So here's the thing, Loida. I know that you said you've gotten taken care of, but it still shows that it's up for auction. Did, did you know that, that you still have a sale date of November 5th? No, but you know what? I'm just getting a lot of calls from, from people like yourself and yeah. um, I'm, I'm just going to talk to my bank and see what they can do. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you're getting bombarded. Um, but I, I just want to make sure you're aware because if you didn't know, Loida, the foreclosure process is going to continue regardless of whether you're communicating with your bank. So the only way that they'll actually postpone the foreclosure and take you off the list is if you have some type of workout solution that's approved by the bank. So are you, you said that you were already working with the bank. Does that mean that you've applied for assistance? Like, where are you in that process? You know what, to be honest, I mean, I'm not really even sure. I know that my husband's been talking to the bank and he said, you know, we're, we're trying to figure something out, but what you're saying, I don't, I haven't even heard a lot of that information. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, it's the bank, right? Like they're such a big bank. You're going to, you probably, if you have called them, have been on customer service for like an hour. I get it. We talk to them all the time, but I just want to make sure that you're taken care of because so many people lose their house because they think that they talked to the bank one time and that the problem solved. And right mm -hmm. now, as it stands, you're still going to auction November 5th. So here's what we can do. If your husband's the one handling it, let's let's get him on the phone so that we can just make sure we get that information for you. You see? Okay. You could go a couple different ways. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And normally, if you're the seller, you know, in the beginning, here's the key. The longer I keep you on the phone, the less you want to tell me to F off, right? Because in the beginning, like, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. In the beginning, you're like, dude, get away from me. Because they don't know that I'm going to be the best thing that's ever happened to them. They don't know that I can provide a solution. All they're thinking is this person's calling me and, and literally calling me and a hundred other people are calling me. Leave me alone, right? And so if I can get down to the heart of it by just asking questions in the beginning, it's just to keep them on the phone so their guard comes down right? And then if I'm, I'm being helpful and empathetic and I'm like, oh, great. Well, that, I remember I didn't even, in that dialogue, you didn't even ask about me because I didn't even give you a chance. So yeah. you don't even know who I am. And the most successful sales calls are the ones that 30 minutes into it, literally I have their socials, I have their, their, all their information. And they're like, wait, what did you say your name was? Who are you? Like literally 30 minutes into it, they realize they've just told me their whole life story and they don't even remember who I am. And that's how you know it was successful because I made it all about them. Because the reality is they don't care about me. They don't care about my experience. They don't care that I'm the best and all the things and they're not going to care about you. The only thing that they're going to care about is their problem. Are you able to fix their problem? And when you get to focus on that, it takes the interview process away where they're like, you know, because if they're asking the questions, they're in control. So all the people I know that are starting out with calling pre-foreclosures, they always say like, how do I get over this objection of like, who are you? Why are you calling me? I'm like, well, you're in this interview hot seat 
because they're the ones in control. But notice you don't even have the opportunity to put me in the hot seat because I just kept going, right? And I'm just asking you questions to figure out what's going on. It really is that simple. Yeah, no. And you know what? I noticed even your tonality, you sounded really concerned. Like, I just want to make sure that you have gotten this taken care of. Yeah. And it didn't sound like just another agent calling. It sounded like someone was really concerned for what was happening to me. And I also wasn't arguing with you. Right. And that's what a lot of people like to do because they're like, oh, well, I've got to let them know. I'm like, if you argue with that person, it's now a you versus me. And the whole point is to show them that you're on their side, that you're on their team. So it doesn't matter what they say, I'm going to agree with them. I'm just going to challenge the way that they're thinking because, you know, they could sit here and say this guy's black and I'm going to be like, yeah, I, I can see that. But I also see a, a little bit of blue and, you know, and so it, that way it's like, okay, I'm on your side. I'm trying to help. I'm not trying to sell you on anything. And it's not my job to sell. It's my job to help them make a decision. Because the alternative is that they lose their house. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So when it comes to mindset, you know, dealing with rejection, how do you deal with that? And how do you train your agents that go after pre foreclosures to just continue to stay on the phone instead of, you know, giving up when these people are rejecting them and saying no and stop calling me and all of that? I think it's, it's all perspective because we need to accept that the worst thing that's going to happen is this person's going to tell you to go to hell, I hate you, blah, 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 and then hang up. That's it. That's literally the worst that can happen. So if we accept that, and you'll never talk to them again. So if you can accept that that's all that's going to happen, if you sound stupid, or if you feel like you sound stupid, or if you feel like you messed up, you're going to keep going. Because here's here's what I tell even the agents that come into our community through our boot camp of how we train, you know, how to do this. I always say, I'm like, look, in the beginning, you know, cold calling is not sustainable for a long term, right? Like you, you want to be able to create a business that, that business comes to you. But in the, in the beginning, you got to get your reps in, right? How are you going to know how to market to someone that you don't know how to talk to? And this is a part of your education. Just like with you, you know, you built your whole business on cold calling and you are, are, you can absolutely be the authority and the expert and give advice and you can train because you've been there, done that. But had you not put in the reps, had you not learned how to pivot the, the um, you know, with your tonality, with how you approached it, you wouldn't be who you are, right? So as learning this, it's not enough just to get information. You have to implement for it to truly resonate so you can actually learn the concept. I think real estate agents specifically, we have it like so backwards when it comes to education. Like truly, I'm in the real estate investing world and talk about a huge difference. You've got real estate investors that are dropping 20, 30 freaking grand to these gurus that are not learning anything because they're so hungry. And then you've got real estate agents that are like, well, I took this um, certification and I'm now certified. And I'm like, certified to do what? Well, what do you know how to do? Like literally you just clicked buttons online and you got your certification, but that doesn't mean you under you understand concepts, but not how to actually run the business, how to actually make the calls, how to overcome the objections because you haven't done it yet. So I think the perspective is if I want to be the master, I have to apply the information I'm learning so that I can have that belief because right now it's just a thing, right? It's just a concept, but it, it's not real. It's not a fact until you actually do it and you make money, right? And most people quit in our business because they don't make money and they don't create momentum. And so mm -hmm. that's why with us, I'm like, I'm not sitting here trying to sell you information. I give so much on free on YouTube. Just go short sell queen. Like I, I'm here to help you with the implementation. So it can go from this, you know, concept to a fact, because I know that that's the, if you if you get results, you're going to stick to it. And you know, once you see that money in your account, you're like, okay, this is real. Now, now I, I don't have to make you make the calls because you know the end result is that ten thousand, twenty thousand in your account. Exactly, and and it's all just being consistent and disciplined, and it's sticking to it long term. So you know, even with what you just mentioned, what you tell your agents. Tell us more about the programs that you have and the coaching that you do, because I'm sure that, you know, right now we barely touched on like the surface level stuff when it comes to pre-foreclosures, yeah. but I'm sure that there's a lot of agents that maybe really want to look into this and do this and perhaps they want to learn more with you. So tell us more about that. 
Yeah. With, like any niche, this isn't for everyone and that's totally fine. So I always want to start with that. Like this isn't going to be for everyone. So make sure it's something that you actually want to do. This is why I have free classes because I'm like, Hey, start here and see if this is a niche you want to get into because it's a completely different seller. Right. And so you have to learn how to communicate with someone that's delusional. I personally think it's a great life skill because I think there are a lot of delusional people and it'll help you in all relationships, but whatever. So when people come in, um, there's two parts to our boot camp, to our to the community. Um, it's lifetime, so it's not four weeks, six weeks. Like once you're in, you're in. Uh, we have the modules where we give you the information step by step, how to find the deals, how to prospect, how to um, overcome the objections. We even teach you how to stop foreclosures. So you get all of that. And then, but the application, what I was talking about is the coaching calls where now that you have all of the information, how do you apply it? And, because your business is going to be completely different than another agent. Um, and the cool thing is that the community, everyone's only focused on this. So we have high level conversations where you constantly see, you know, oh, okay, you know, Steve just made 50 grand on this deal. Like he's, he's sharing and we, it, everybody has an abundant mindset. So they're like, great, this is how I made this money. This is exactly what I said. And so it just allows you to constantly collaborate and get new ideas um, and then help getting um, your problems fixed. Right. So instead of stopping because you can't figure out what to do next, you're like, Hey, what do I do? Great. Now go apply it. So it really helps, you know, the momentum and really gets to fast track you because you don't have to worry about figuring anything out. You just have to apply. Um, you just have to, you know, implement what we're telling you to do. So what is the website that people can go to or yeah. how can they reach you? Yeah. So you can go to the short Um, if you want to do the free class and kind of see what we're about, just go to YouTube, uh, short sell queen, um, that you can go, um, if you just look it up on YouTube and we have all of the links there and you know, you also have free videos that you can start watching right away. Yeah. So if you guys are watching this, definitely make sure to subscribe to Nicole's channel, the short sell queen, because there's a lot more information there and she goes into a lot of very detailed, um, things that will help you have a better understanding. Now, as we wrap this up, Nicole, I just want to ask you, because there's probably people that are wondering like what's going on right now when it comes to pre foreclosures and what are you seeing and what do you think is going to happen? Uh, the, the question of the hour. So, um, right now, since April, we have seen a massive, massive amount of short sales specifically um, because the sellers that we're seeing are sellers that just purchased in the last couple of years and they have no equity. Um, in addition to that, we're seeing foreclosures consistently increase every month. So what I think, I think it's a perfect storm of people that can't sell, right? And now we have all of this drama with the, the lawsuit and everything. And so I feel like it's harder now more than ever to sell properties. And if a regular consumer feels that way, imagine someone that has a deadline with zero flexibility and has to sell right away. And so as a result, we're seeing um, foreclosures increase. And honestly, I don't see it letting up anytime soon unless the buyers can really get their purchasing power back. Because with interest rates being high and sales prices being high, it's, you know, it's very, it, it limits the buyers and the amount of people that are, that can financially afford, you know, to purchase. And so I know, you know, we're in, we're all over the country. We're in 14 States. Um, so I am very aware that every market is different, but from a full view, not just, you know, on one market, um, you know, sales have dropped even in this summer. Um, if you look at the statistics of like, what we're used to having as far as the movement. We have more inventory here locally and nationwide than we've ever had. Um, even houses that, I mean, I have beautiful flips that we've listed that normally would fly off the market because they're, they're just gorgeous and people are picking them apart and it's taking like two, three weeks. And you're like, what is even happening? Two, three weeks just to get showings and, and traffic. So um, I think more than ever, if you are a realtor and you're watching this, you got to figure out your value proposition. You got to figure out what's going to make you different um, so that you can stay in this business. Because I think the end of this year, we're going to see a whole bunch of people not renew their license, a whole bunch of people leave the industry like we already kind of have um, once they realize that things are not the same. It's, it's not, you know, there's no low hanging fruit anymore. 
which I'm excited about because I feel like it's going to require this rebranding for what it means to be a realtor since we've have such a crappy reputation as a, as far as the public perception. So this is really our time to shine. Like we're we're going to crush it. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I agree. And I know you mentioned, you know, make sure that you have your value proposition. What would be the last thing that you would recommend agents to do right now whether it's a skill or just anything that they have to do? Um best advice I could give someone is know why you should get paid. Like it's not enough to say, well, I'm supposed to get this percentage. Why? Why would a consumer pay you either as a buyer's agent or a listing agent? Figure that out. Because if you don't know and you can't articulate it, what are you doing? The public definitely doesn't know. So the people that understand the value and the solutions they provide are not even a part of the conversation of all these agents that are freaking out, right? Like we're not even worried about that because we're like, we know exactly how, why what we do is so unique and special and why we deserve compensation. And if you can't say the same, I would figure that out before you start marketing and spending money anywhere because if you can't articulate it then you definitely don't deserve it. Exactly. Awesome. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for doing this interview once again. Yeah. I know that we could probably talk for hours when it comes to this topic, but I think you just gave enough information for people to kind of have a better idea. So if you're watching this, again, make sure to subscribe to her channel, rewatch this video and follow her on Instagram. So thank you Nicole once again and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye.